we are looking at ways to combine blocks in a block diagram in order to extract the composite or the complete differential equation or transfer function. We've already looked at a method called brute force. It's the method that always works. In this video, we're going to look at what's referred, what I'm referring to as block diagram algebra. Block diagram algebra is a set of rules that you can use to combine blocks. There are many sets of rules. Those are available in your text. In general, you can get away with just a couple. The most basic two rules are these. One is blocks in series. Given a system like this, g of s, h of s, where this is u and this is y, the resulting block diagram has this form, g of s times h of s y u. Notice I'm writing these as a function of s. I'm now just going to drop the function of s and you can assume that my block diagrams are always functions of s. We can verify this if we do the brute force method. So I will write a variable name here. Then my method is to next write the input output relationship. So y1 is equal to g times u and y is equal to h times y1. Now substitute and I get y is equal to h substitute y1 in g u, which is exactly what I have over here. y is equal to g h u. Because these are simply polynomials, order of multiplication doesn't matter. Second block that's useful is the feedback rule, and it looks like this. So we have an input u, which is combined with this feedback, set into g, and then through to the output. The block diagram rule for this is g over 1 minus or plus g h y. The input is u. Notice this is plus or minus, this is minus or plus. By writing this way, I've accounted for two cases. One where the feedback is added to u, in which case the rule is 1 minus gh. The other case is where the feedback is subtracted from u, in which case the rule is 1 plus gh. We can verify this using our brute force method. So I'll write variable names at all the outputs. y1, got y, and I'm going to cheat a little u plus or minus y1. Next, I write the input output relations. y is equal to g times u plus or minus y1, and y1 is equal to h times y. Eliminate y1 from the first equation gives me y is equal to g u plus or minus h y. And then following through with the algebra, we come to this. You can see that when I take this term plus or minus g h over to the other side, I need to change the sign. It becomes minus or plus. And then finally, I can write this as a transfer function. Output over input is equal to g over 1 minus or plus g h. Using these two basic rules in combination with brute force you can quickly combine blocks in most block diagram systems. Here's a simple example. We begin with our system and I want to start combining blocks until I can get just to the relationship between u and y. So I see first there is a feedback block here. I can use the feedback rule that is shown right here. So I can write u goes to 1 over s and then apply the feedback rule to this set right there. I have g 1 over s over 1. This is a minus, so that means I need to use a plus. 1 plus g, which is 1 over s, times h, which is 3. Let's simplify that block a little bit more. u 1 over s, multiply the top and the bottom of the block by s, gives me 1 over s plus 3. Now I can apply my second rule, which allows me to combine blocks in series. That's done by multiplying the blocks. So my final is u goes into 1 over s squared plus 3s y. And the transfer function is given right here. Again, the poles of the system are the roots of d of s, which is the characteristic equation. s squared plus 3s is equal to 0. The roots are s is equal to 0 s is equal to minus 3. Using block diagram algebra, 
with just these two simple rules, we can simplify most complex blocks.